Hey, welcome back to the Progressive Brothers Podcast. This is episode 10. Please hit the like button as you come in, share the video if possible, and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Let's rock and roll. So, there's been this pondering question, you know, about big tech, Silicon Valley, liberal tech, having too much power, whether or not they have too much power over freedom of speech, the First Amendment. And so, people have asked me, because I work in tech, is this true? Does Silicon Valley violate the First Amendment? You know, with their uh, social media tech and, and their smartphones and smart devices and so on and so forth. In regards to the President of the United States at the time, Donald Trump, on whether or not he should have been banned from Twitter and other social media platforms. Well, let's look at this um, from the onset of the First Amendment. And I'm going to pull the First Amendment straight from Congress. It states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the pre- uh, or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Okay, that's what the First Amendment says. Now, in regards to social media and big tech, Silicon Valley, whatever you want to call them, At the time of November 3rd, Trump had made various statements that were considered to be in violation of Twitter's policies. Okay. And on September 17th of 2020, Twitter placed a warning label on a tweet by U.S. President Donald Trump saying his post included potentially misleading information regarding the process of mailing voting. Because of the new and unprecedented massive amount of unsolicited unsolicited ballots which will be sent to voters or wherever this uh, wherever this year the November 3rd election result may never be accurately determined which is what some want. Another election disaster. Stop ballot madness. Trump had tweeted. So what they did was they placed warnings on all of his tweets, even going back to September. Prior to that, they had put on warnings too, prior to September of 2020. By November 3rd, 4th, and beyond that, he had made 200 inaccurate statements about election fraud and some other various election interference. According to according to Twitter, and I'm going to read it right here, all the links will be in the uh, description beneath the video. The move of the move was a major departure for Twitter, which had previously cited a public interest policy that provided special protections to world leaders even if their messages may otherwise violate the company's policies. But faced with violence in Washington, D.C. and mounting pressure to do more than label, Twitter said the policy had reached its limit. Our public interest policy, which has guided our enforcement action in this uh, area for years, ends where we believe the risk of harm is higher and or more severe, Twitter said. So the question is, did Twitter, big tech, Silicon Valley, the liberal left, did they go too far and do, and do they have too much power in terms of the First Amendment? In this regard, the policies that Twitter had in place were being violated by the president. The president had special privileges as a world leader, but he had abused the policy of Twitter and had nothing to do with the First Amendment. And the reason why this is the case because the First Amendment does not cover 
the policies of the platform or the technology that he was using. And so what's happening here is people who have an agenda want to regulate big tech so that they don't have to actually abide by the policies. They want their first amendment to supersede the policies of a, of a private tech organization. This is where things get in a, uh, a bit hairy and nefarious. You have people who want to do whatever they want to do despite what the impact is, but want to hide behind a constitutional right that they want to take away from other people. That's where the fear mongering about whether or not big tech went too far, whether or not they have too much power comes from. And so the fear here is that tech companies that happen to be liberal, which 99% of them are, tend to circumvent the ideology of those who don't respect the process or the policies of said company or said situation at the time. And so they want the ability to spread misinformation but not actually take a consequence for the impact of it, such as January 6th. And so, going back to the original question, does big tech have too much power? I'm of the position that no, big tech has too little power. Because if anybody can say whatever they want, especially someone with that much privilege like President Trump had at the time and people got and people were, were killed over this you should go to jail for this but they have too little power and so the idea that they have this immense power they can just silence people and they can you know uh, uh, marginalize people that was never the case for Trump Trump was given 200 warnings since November up to January 6 200 and they flagged a half dozen of his uh, uh, of his comments on Twitter, his tweets, because it was so incendiary. He had been given special interest policy, something that common civilians like myself and those who are subscribed to this channel don't have. So he had more power than he typically should have. But people want to make it seem as if big tech, Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all of these social media tech companies, they're just out to get conservatives. And it's all it's, it's all about wokeism. And, and, and we got to do something about wokeism because all of these tech companies are woke and everybody's woke on the left. And all the, we, we have to protect ourselves from, from the wokens, uh, the, 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 uh, the woke imperialists. But in reality, you were giving... <laughs> You were giving a whole lot of leadway as a president and you abused it because you couldn't get away with it. And so the idea that Silicon Valley had so much power, that was never the case. Somebody died that day. Democracy was at stake. Somebody had to make a decision to pull the plug. And that and that was it. Now, could he have spun up a never account? He, he did have the White House Twitter account, but that wasn't flagged at all. In fact, that does not get flagged because it's closely monitored and there's a special interest policy behind it. And so to summarize and wrap things up, does big tech have too much power over people's freedom of speech? The idea that your First Amendment rights are being violated is not true. And I'll read it again from the con uh, from the Constitution um, on Congress's um, site. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of, free of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peacefully as to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievance. The Constitution does not extend to Twitter. Twitter has its own policy. The Constitution only reflects what happens in Congress and within government. 
So like, share, and subscribe. You all have a good day.